All brands take influence from other designs, whether that be a small detail that's picked up from it or lifting the entire design itself. We have big brands such as Supreme and Palace that are popular for this and adding a little logo somewhere in the design such as the Palace Terminator Triferg T in which John Connor is with the Terminator wearing a Palace Triferg. And it's just this we'll be doing today. We'll be taking a look at pieces Revenge has referenced and then the final product that they've come up with. So to start things off, we'll be looking at the Revenge Lightning logo, which is a long lasting font they've been using since way back in the day, all the way up to the recent Rick Venge Lightning Ski Mask collaboration. So this is a little bit different because it's just a font that's been used. A lot of the other pieces we're looking at are going to be direct copies of pre-existing designs. But as far as this font goes, it was used largely by v Lone on this piece right here, this long sleeve, though Revenge didn't copy the lightning going down the sleeve. And I believe the font is titled XXII or 22 in Roman numerals and then ultimate something. You can find it for yourself and download it for your own use online. I personally don't see this as a huge reference and definitely not a huge ripoff, but since both brands are often seen in the same sphere or setting I think that there was obviously some uh, insight taken from this v -Lone design when Garrett decided to use that lightning logo or come up with that lightning font. So next up we have the Revenge basketball jersey or the Raptors basketball jersey and this is actually the original right here. It's pretty much the same exact design. The only thing that changes is the number on the back and then they say Revenge. So on the original you have 14 and then the player's last name green but then you flop it over to the Revenge one or the one they decided to ship and all of the all that changes really is the number, swaps to 19 for 2019 when they made it, and then revenge up top for the name. I think this case is a lot different than the last one where this one just completely rips off the design. It takes the same piece and just changes the number and then player name, which I don't think is very creative at all. I think a lot of people going into this when they saw revenge for the Raptors uh, jersey on the front, instead of saying Raptors, they thought, oh, they added kind of a creative spin on it. But the thing is, it's the same exact jersey. This was just a special edition jersey that the Raptors put out for an event that was going on. Next up, we have the Revenge Pantera stuff. I'm forgetting what the actual title for it was, but you have this skull and then flames coming out and around it. And then you have the big Revenge spell out kind of block letters where it kind of follows this metal um, styling for designs where you know you have uh, one big letter on the end and then another big letter on the end but it's kind of throwing a wrench in it because they're block letters whereas usually when this happens they're kind of um, more free form and stylistic whereas this is a lot more kind of condensed and uh, neat I suppose. So next we flop over to the Pantera Tour tee. I forget which tour this is for, but obviously the only thing that changes is Revenge to Pantera or Pantera to Revenge, however way you want to look at it. So this is kind of like a middle ground for the last two that we looked at. They are taking the majority of the design. You could argue they're taking the whole design, but at least they're changing a big portion of it. They're changing Pantera to Revenge. So I can at least appreciate that, but in my opinion, I, I'm just not crazy about this design. I don't really like the Pantera font that they use. I'm, I'm pretty sure Pantera pretty much stuck to that font for the life of their group. And it's never really a font that I've been able to get behind, so uh, I'm not crazy about it. And then the skull also looks kind of weird. It's almost like grainy and just looks a little bit strange. I think overall, I would definitely give them a creative pass or you know, acknowledge that this was done in a tasteful manner, though I don't think the outcome of it was really that appealing. Next up, we have a very recent design. This is the Mickey Cobain tee, which features Mickey Mouse dressed up as Kurt Cobain playing a guitar. So the inspiration or design for this one actually came from a brand called Number 9, which had a Mickey Mouse design seen here. Obviously, the two are strikingly similar. Only things that change are kind of the costume that Mickey is wearing, and then the posture changes a little bit since the microphone is removed and both hands are placed on the guitar. Another interesting thing that both these designs share are back prints, which just feature the back view of what the front image shows. So this design is a little weird because it's not a huge pop culture image. Like Disney wasn't really putting this out. This was number nine and Revenge obviously referenced it or you know, arguably stole it, however you wanna look at it. They did though add a fun twist on it, which I, I do appreciate to see. I just think in the end, the creative idea or approach that was executed on it just isn't that much. Like it, it's kind of lazy. 
And I sound like a hypocrite because I did buy this, but I think a big thing with the Revenge uh, Mickey Cobain design is that it's not only just a Mickey Mouse design or Kurt Cobain design, but it has nods to a lot of their older pieces. We have the Don't Kill Your Friends tee, which featured an XXX Tentacion version of Mickey Mouse. And then Revenge has also done Kurt Cobain designs in the past. So I think it's kind of a cool blending of that stuff. But at the end of the day, the design that they came up with, it, because it stole the number nine like image or like pose or whatever I, I think it's it definitely takes away from it a little bit next up we have the dark throne work jacket i believe it is called it is reference to a dark funeral piece so the naming scheme that they followed makes sense you know they're not trying to hide it it's just a little bit of a reference and this piece is literally just an album artwork piece redone by one of revenge's artists and then thrown on a work jacket in an all-over print. A tiny detail was changed, and that's the fact that the like cultists or whatever on the bottom of the jacket have revenge arc logos across their hood, which I don't really think is enough of a creative change to kind of warrant just a, a full-on copy of it. Though a lot of brands do this where they just take a pre-existing like pattern or all-over print and put it on their piece. And I can kind of get behind this one because it wasn't just a straight ripoff. They actually did like their own painted version of it. So I think there were good intentions behind this and I can, you know, kind of give it my stamp of approval, though I wasn't really the biggest fan of the design at the end of the day. So the final piece we're going to look at is one that was leaked and hasn't actually been released. It may never see the light of day. And this is kind of like a sporty looking anorak. Most noticeably, this piece features a black hood and then a band of logos going around the chest. And if this design looks familiar, that's because it was already done by FTP on their competition anorak in the reflective colorway. You can see in this image, we obviously have the same branding and the same color blocking. So it is an obvious reference. And once again, with like the V-Loan thing that we talked about where both these brands are kind of in the same setting, they're in the same group, they're in a lot of the same spheres. This is even more so like tightly knit with revenge. You know, these brands are both very similar. These uh, owners are very similar. These are two brands that get mentioned alongside each other very commonly. Being such a basic design though, it's hard to condemn somebody for this because it's just a color blocked hood or a different colored hood and then your branding going around the chest. So uh, it, it's hard to kind of like hate on this, but it, at the same time, it is such an obvious like kind of rip off of what another brand has already done. And there's such little effort gone into it that I, I really can't support it. So uh, this one does not get the, the check of approval for me. So that's all we've got for pieces. There are other reference pieces for Revenge that do exist, but when thinking of a list, these are kind of the main ones that come to mind for myself. And I'll also say that in general, I don't have any issue with brands referencing pre-existing designs or pop culture, just because, you know, this results in some of the best pieces. You, you take something that you already have like ties to or connections, you know, sentimental value with, and then you add a cool twist, hopefully by the brand, but, this also results in some of the worst pieces because when not done right, not executed well, it just comes off lazy and you know it results in people that dislike it even more because they already had that sentimental value, they had anticipated a cool design and then you give them a lackluster just like turd and they don't care for it at all. That's all I've got for you guys though. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, or don't do any of that. Just watching it means enough to me. As always, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video.